Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. I have a special guest today, my dear friend, Colleen. We both moved to Florida very close together. She got here before me, and it's been great to have her here because she has really offered a lot to me by way of energy, medicine, doing exercises to calm my crazy squirrel brain, my ADD, keep me centered. Um, for those of you who are jumping on here who may have been to our first Hair Color Secrets Insider Retreat, Colleen was one of our sessions and everyone absolutely loved it. They were raving over their time with Colleen, um, the things that she shared, especially the exercise at the end where she did the yoga nidra. So I wanted to bring her on today because as you all know, the world just seems to be upside down right now. And we're all a little out of sorts and very anxious and fearful. You know, even people who aren't traditionally fearful people are feeling a little unsettled. And I've been, you know, saying I, I want to do something to help, you know, my members in my group, as well as my coffee chat listeners. I don't want to just get on today and talk about hair color because there's so much more to um to visit as far as how we're all feeling. So I want to bring Colleen on. I'm going to make my big face go away. I'm going to bring her to the forefront, have her introduce herself more properly and give you a little more about what it is that she does. But we're actually going to be, she's going to be sharing some movement with you. So, you know, get yourself into a comfortable position. I'm not sure, you know, obviously if you're driving in your car, it's, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you are home and you're able to do the actual movement with her, you will notice an immediate result <clears throat> in the shift of your energy. I can't say enough about what she has taught me. You know, it's something as simple. We joke all the time about I tell her like, I've been getting parking spaces everywhere I go doing these little movements. And it sounds crazy, but it's your thoughts, what you're thinking before you get somewhere about, oh, there's not going to be any parking. Well, then there's not going to be any parking. So our thoughts are really powerful. So Colleen, I'm gonna switch over to you and have you say hello to everyone. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Elaine. And I'm very excited to be here. Uh, we are going through some major changes in our lives uh, with the coronavirus. And so it's a really good time. It might be um, probably the only time that many people have been able to be home and actually take a breath in, even though it's scary. It also could be a time that we get a chance to nurture ourselves and actually take a breath. So today, um, my background is in holistic nursing, and I've been doing different energy techniques for over 28 years. And it, part of it was in the hospital where I worked there for like 23 years. And doing, I was a cardiac nurse, but I ended up doing many different energy techniques with my patients, and they healed very quickly and almost like little miracles. Energy is a big component of all of us. It's something that we've never been really taught about. It's unless you have come to yoga or you experience acupuncture or something like that, it may be something a little new to you. But what I want to share today is that we have a whole aspect of ourselves of energy. And by including that in our life, we get to um, have 50% more ability in every single thing that we do. So I'd like to invite you today to try some of the exercises out and do it for yourself. I didn't realize any of you might be driving a car, so please don't <laughs> do anything like that. Um, but if you just get if you get in as, uh, just a comfortable seated position, we can do most of these exercises. So, um, but before we start, what I usually like to do is do two of the exercises that just create a harmony with our group. Even though we're not sitting next to each other, when people um, are together, like we are on this, our energies are actually connected. And by helping us get into harmony, it creates a more effective way to learn. So what I'd just like to invite you to do, the first one is called, um, gosh, my brain went, <laughs> it's called whole grain. 
And so what I'm gonna invite you to do, as long as you're not in a car, is to just cross your ankles. You can cross them either way, it really doesn't matter. And then you're gonna put one hand out in front with the palm facing out. Then you're gonna bring the other hand together and so that you have palm to palm. And then you're gonna bring your hands up under you. If this doesn't work for you, you can always just fold your hands like this. And I'll invite you to just close your eyes for a minute. This exercise helps calm the mind and it helps to integrate both hemispheres of the brain. So it not only makes you feel more relaxed, it starts to have you think more clearly. So just close your eyes for a minute and I'll let you know when to open them. And just breathe. Good. And when you're ready, just uncross everything, open your eyes, and just see and notice how you're feeling to see if it calmed you down at all. The group itself feels more relaxed. So that's a technique. We did it to create harmony within our group, but it is a technique that you can use at night when you're having difficult sleeping. You can lay in bed and just cross your ankles, cross your hands, uh, cross your chest, and it'll just start to relax your body so that you can sleep better. The next one we're gonna do is called cram pull. This one is gonna open up the sutures between the two hemispheres of the brain, and it's gonna allow the cerebral spinal fluid come up through your spine, and then just go up and wash your brain, which helps you think more clearly. It it actually is really beneficial for people that suffer with headaches because it just helps open up all of these stuck energy. And wherever we have pain, that typically is from pain when energy is stuck. So as we get to move things and your energy flows more freely, you feel better all over. All right, so what we're gonna do is start with your fingers, put your fingertips on your forehead and just press in and then pull out to the temples and then just drop that energy, the excess. Now we're gonna come with our fingertips at the hairline, pressing our other fingertips in, pressing in and pulling out about an inch. So just press in, pull out, press in and pull out. This exercise really helps free up so much tension that gets accumulated in our head and our neck. Now really work the back of your head and your neck. Pull that tension out and then come down across your shoulders and then just drop that energy. Okay, and then just see how you feel. Take a moment, just breathe in, close your eyes and just get in touch with yourself. See how you feel. So that is a wonderful exercise if you're getting ready to do any work at the computer, if you're going to be studying anything or reading, um, and then just to relax and feel good. All right, so just take a moment. The energy feels really good in the group. So, all right, now I'm gonna just um, tell you a little bit about energy. So many people hear about energy and it sounds like it's this voodoo thing or this really strange, Thing that we're just not used to. What I want to tell you is that energy is everything. Everything in our whole world is energy. The things that we see physically, our bodies, tables, floors, walls, the sky, trees, everything is energy. And we're connected to everything. 
So in this time of uncertainty, a lot of people are feeling sad or worried, scared, not knowing what's going to go on in the future. And so we're all connected. So what we can do is if we work with ourselves and keep our energies really running smoothly, then we help affect the world. So it's not a selfish thing to take care of yourself. It's something that we actually need to do because that affects our, our family, our friends, our community, and the world. Okay, and it's actually scientific. So, all right, so we're gonna get started with a, a couple. I'm just gonna, I have a little list of things uh, to look at so it keeps me on track. So the first one that I wanna um, tell you about, it's an amazing one, it's called running energy. This is how we can get grounded into the earth, but also get the energy from the cosmos coming through. And as we run this energy in our body, we're gonna start feeling much more relaxed and, and stronger and actually have a little bit more vitality. So you start with having your feet flat on the floor, sitting up straight. And now just imagine that you have a cord coming down from your sacrum all the way down into the earth. Even if you're on the second floor or wherever you are, you just imagine this cord going down through wherever you are and then down into, deep, deep into the earth. Good. When you feel grounded, just notice if you see anything in that area because that'll let you know where you hook in every time you ground. So grounding is really important for us. It's just like electricity. When we plug in a plug, we need a, there's a third one for grounding. And that's because the excess energy goes out there. And so that's what we want to do because we can accumulate too much. And this helps uh, release that. The second part of this exercise is to have your feet flat on the ground. And now imagine the energy coming up through the earth, coming up through the bottom of your feet, up around your knees, going up your thighs, and then filling that whole area in between your hips. Just imagine a bowl there, just all the earth energy filling it up. And when that energy gets so full that it starts to overflow, use your imagination to see the excess flow down that cord back into the earth. You may want to close your eyes because it helps you go in more. But just imagine that the energy is coming up through your feet. As it fills up and spills over the bowl, it goes down that grounding cord into the earth. Just feel that for a moment. See if it makes a difference. Yeah, I can feel it already. You're doing great. The next part of this, uh, there's two parts. The next one, you're going to imagine energy coming down from the heavens or the cosmos, coming in through the back of your head, going all the way down your spine, and then coming around the tailbone and up the front of your body. And then it just comes through your head. And just think of it like a fountain. This excess energy is just going to come over come out and surround your whole body. And now imagine the energy going in the back of your head again. This time it goes down your spine. It flows up the front of your body. But when it gets to the shoulders, it stops and then it spreads out over your shoulders and down both arms where the excess comes out your hands. So you have this continuous motion of this energy moving coming up from the ground, and then moving from the cosmos into your body, down your spine, and up the front. So just close your eyes for a minute and allow this energy to just flow freely. You're doing great. Go ahead. Now, just imagine you have a little dial that you can turn up this energy full and turn it up halfway first and then see if you feel a little increase. 
You may or you may not, it doesn't matter, it still works. Great, <laughs> great, this is a good group. <laughs> it builds up that. And you can turn up all the way to the highest if you want. Wonderful. So this um, technique called running energy can run for a couple hours if you like. You can just start it in the morning and have it run a couple hours because it really fills you with this beautiful vitality energy. And it helps get rid of the static in your system through the porting and the touch to the earth. So you can just set this in the morning and then it'll run for a while. And then whenever you feel like you need it, you can do it again. I tell you, if you try this and incorporate this into your life, you're going to see a big difference in how you feel. And at the end, if you have any questions, Elaine will take those and, and then I'll see if I can answer them. Okay. So, and also when you do any type of energy work, it's really a good idea to have water uh, nearby. It doesn't matter. Um, we're just showing you some techniques, but water is really important for energy to flow in your body. Okay. Check in and see how you're feeling. Energize. How you feel. All right. So now I want to um, teach you a technique that's really so valuable. It's called a permission rose. And this is going to help you with any negative energies or just energies that don't harmonize with you, keep out of your aura. So you may have been to places where you're walking into a party or, or someplace and you just feel this overwhelming feeling like it's too much. And that's your energy field letting you know that it's too much coming in. So we want our, you've probably heard the expression of an aura. So our aura, is our energy and it should be really strong all the way out to the till your arms go out to your fingertips if you extend your arm fully out and that goes 360 degrees around your body and that's your space and we want that energy to be really strong because that's the one that feeds you it does two really important things it keeps energy harmful energy out away from you but it also allows really wonderful energy of ideas and uh, just different things to enhance your life to come in. So when that energy is not strong and it's out too far or in too close, that's when we can start getting overwhelmed and we get in big groups. Um, it's not like we're in that right now because we're not allowed to be with a lot of people, but this is a really good technique to learn forever because we have so many different energies from our telephones or the cell towers and things that our body was not um, has not evolved to deal with and so this is one way you can really help your own energy be really strong and help you so what you do is you just picture a rosebud a beautiful tight rosebud and just have it, the, the rose out in front of you at the fingertips as far as your hands can reach at that distance. And then you're going to imagine that circle all the way around your body and all of that energy inside. You're going to give yourself and your energy the, uh, the permission to stay in that field. And it's just your energy. It's not permission for anybody else's energy to come in. It's just yours. The second part of that is you're also going to give permission for everybody outside of that rose to extend their energy wherever they like. So it's permission for both parties. And as you do this with other people, like just as you put your own rose out there and you're with other people, it gives them that rose too. So you can help protect your family the same way. All right, so now just imagine that, close your eyes and just imagine that rose at the finger uh, tip length out in front of you. And now just imagine all the energy that's in that circle and give yourself permission that that's your energy. Great. And then outside of your circle, 
it's everybody else's energy and it can go wherever it wants. It's not into your energy field. Go ahead, it's really changed things. I'm anxious to talk to you at the end to see how, how things are going for you. I'm not used to just talking into a computer. I'm used to a live audience. <laughs> so this is an adjustment for me. Um, but I'm so excited to do it. All right. So that's your permission roles. And that will help you in groups um, anytime. But just also strengthen your, your own aura. And I'm going to um, talk about another four other exercises. And these are from Donna Eden Energy Medicine. And there are different techniques that are going to help balance different systems in your, in your energy field. So the first one we're going to do, this one's called a cross crawl. This one helps to integrate both hemispheres of your brain. So if, if it didn't happen, um, you may notice times when you lose your keys. Or if you're driving, you get lost. And you're like, what else need to do? What happened is that your energy is separated instead of crossing and integrating in the brain. So we still function when our energies are side by side, but we work the best when they're together. So this exercise is really simple. I would suggest that you do this in the morning. All of these that you can just do in the morning. They only take a few minutes. And the way the cross crawl works, you can do it seated. Um, you're just gonna have to use your imagination because I my whole body doesn't come into the, this picture right now. But what you're going to do is just hold your hands up. And then you're going to have your, your right hand go down to your left thigh. Bring it back up and your left hand to your right thigh. And you're, we're going to continue this. We're going to do 12 and we're going to do three sets of 12. All right, so bring your hands up. Take a breath. Exhale. Good. And then I'll take your right hand. One, one, two. Two, three, three, four, four, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. Stop for a moment. Close your eyes and see how you feel. See if you feel a little shift in your energy. Okay, I'm yawning, so I can feel that you are shifting, and, and that's that's wonderful. So we're going to do two more sets of 12. We're going to stop in between. So breathing is important, so you want to keep breathing during this. Great. Bring your hands up again. All right, we'll start with the right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, perfect. Take a breath in. Oh, good, see how you feel. This is gonna make you more effective in every single thing that you do, especially right now, you may have a little uh, time off. So working with um, your clients, cutting their hair, coloring their hair, this will make you on top of your game for everything that you do you will see it's noticeably different once your energies are integrated and crossing. And it's actually every single organ of your body it enhances. So it's a really important thing. People that have trouble with depression or people that have bipolar um, diagnosis, this one helps tremendously. So anybody that you may know, teach them this. All right, so take another breath in. Great. We're going to do one more set of three or 12. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, God. Oh, this is really a good one for all of you. But I'm just going to let that settle. Typically, I stretch this out much longer when we're in person, um, but we only have a short amount of time. So I want to at least show you these things. And Elaine said that this is um, recorded. 
so you can always go back and um, practice with the recording and slow it down a little. The other thing I wanted to tell you, you could also do this standing and you can do it with some fast music you want to do it dancing and just kind of swirl your arms and your legs around and um, just have fun with it, jumping around. If you have children, it's a really fun thing for them to do. And it's, it really helps them stay focused and have their energies crossing too. All right, so just take a moment. The next one we're going to do, this one's called the four pounds. And in this one particularly, it's going to help your energy so that they run forward, but it really helps boost your immune system. And it's a really wonderful time to be doing that, to keep our, our immune system really strong for no matter what's going around. So it starts with, it's called the fourth thumbs, meaning that we're just going to tap. So it's going to start, I'm going to take my glasses off. The first one is this one meridian, and it's just on the bone under your eye in the center, and you're gonna just tap that. Um, we're gonna just do that for about five to 10 seconds. Perfect. Good, okay, it's working good for the group. So this one helps ground you. If you need to get grounded in an instant, it's a really good way to do that. It also, uh, it's this part of the stomach meridian, and it just helps us relax because our stomach is usually our anxiety. It shows up there. So the next step that we're going to do, um, just come down to your collarbone and you feel where those two bumps are. What you're going to do is come down straight and then out, come down about an inch and then out about an inch. And you should feel like a little divot in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to um, put your, it's called a uh, three finger bump. So put your thumb and your two fingers. And then you're just going to tap this. And what this is doing, this is the end of the kidney meridian. And this is going to shoot the energy up from your um, from here to, to your eyes and up to your brain. So it gets you more alert and more awake. The kidney is like the battery for our body. So when you get tired, this is a great exercise to do. Okay, let's take a breath. Okay, good. Good. Working. I'm going to just slow it down for a minute take because I just feel like it's a little too fast for you. The next one we're going to do, you come down to your um, chest in the center of your breastbone, and you're just going to make a fist, like it's kind of like Tarzan, and then you're going to tap that. This is the one that's going to really help increase your and boost your immune system. So you're going to just do this for five to 10 seconds. And, and again, all of these are really good to teach your children and your spouse or partner. Okay, the last of the four thumbs is underneath you. It's about four inches from under your armpit. So let me just move this a little bit. So you're going to come down and it's, a, it's kind of the center of where your bra is if you have one on today. <laughs> and so you'll find a tender spot. So just use your thumbs and go down about four inches from, um, from your armpit and you'll find, yes, that's many tender spots as well. Whoa. So what you're gonna do is again, we're gonna bump those areas. And what it's doing is it's getting stuck energy moving. And as your energy moves, that's what gives you more um, vitality and improves your health. Because when energy stuck, that's when illness happens. All right, oh, it feels a little better. It did move some. But that's one you can do anytime. It's also part of, it's the end of the spleen meridian. And the spleen is how we metabolize our emotions and how we metabolize our food. So we often have a lot of things going on there. So that's why our spleen is usually tender. But this one is really great to help with weight and just being more stable in your emotions. So that was called the three, the four thumbs. Again, it was the stomach. Then it was, it's called kidney um, 27 here. And then the thymus thumb and then the spleen underneath. Perfect. So, and they're just, uh, I'm gonna just show you two more. And 
it might be getting close to time, so I'm not sure whether some of you need to jump off, but please only take the moment. The next one is called the zip up. This one keeps your energies really strong. If you have trouble with confidence in, at times in your life, this is a really wonderful um, technique to do. It also helps send energy up to the brain that helps you think more clearly. What you do is you just take your fingertips and you place them on your pubic bone. And then you bring your fingertips, your fingers up under your neck, stopping at your chin, and then exhaling down. So I'm going to show, we're going to do three more together. Um, so we'll start, put your fingertips on your pubic bone, inhaling, bring your hands up, stopping at the lower lip, and then exhaling. Now this time we're gonna think of a word we wanna zip up in our field, and this is what you can do anytime. So it might be joy, energy, peace, confidence, whatever it is that you wanna zip up in your field. So get your word. And now put your fingertips on your pubic bone, bring it up. And now exhale. The breath is really important because that helps energy move um, well too. And now uh, the last time we're going to do this, you're going to stop at the um, underneath your lip. You're going to lock it like you have a key. So we want to lock that word in in our energy. And then we'll just toss that out. So our energies up the front of our body stay really strong. All right. So fingertips on the pubic bone. Inhale. Stopping at your lower lip. Lock it in. Throw it away. And exhale. Perfect. Uh, the, the next one, and this is the last of our exercises um, of the energy medicine, is you're going to take your middle finger and place it in your navel and take your other middle finger and place it between your eyebrows. And then you're going to lift both of those. So just lift them up just a little, you're not pulling, but this connects all of the meridians. So this is a wonderful one to do in the morning when you're laying in bed, because you'll feel better before you even get out of bed. So just hold that until you feel a yawn come over you or a sigh. That means that you're hooked up. Now, if this is the first time you've ever done it, it usually takes a little longer, but it's such a quick way to get your body functioning better, much better. Okay, I feel like it's complete for a lot of you. Great. Great. So I want to just take a minute to see, um, just to let your energy settle. And I just want to check in with um, Elaine, if it's okay if I do a few more things with uh, um, intentions and thoughts. Yes, you're fine. Keep going. Okay, good. All right. So these were really important techniques that you do to correct their energy path systems in your body. But what affects us the most are our thoughts. Every single thought that we have is energy. It's a vibration. And it affects our life and, and what we put out there and what we're bringing in. So if you want to make just one change in your life, start with your thoughts. Just become aware of what's going on. With the way that the world is um, functioning right now, this unknown, this uncertainty, it's really easy for our minds to go off into this place of fear and being scared and not knowing what's going to happen with us. What I'd like to invite you to, to do and to try is stay in the present moment. See how you feel right now. If you have those thoughts that are you know, making you scared. See if you can just change those. You can just see a stop sign. And then just decide what feeling you would like to feel instead. I'm not saying that this, um, that we shouldn't, you know, that we wouldn't be scared or anything. But what I want to tell you is our thoughts create how we feel. So if you probably had experience where you've worried about things in the past because it was something scary coming up, but it just made you feel bad. It created disease in your body and it just 
zapped your energy. And then maybe what you were worried about never even came into fruition. It just, you know, things worked out. But your body and your mind paid a price for that. So what I'd like to just suggest that you try a little bit, which isn't always easy, but it's watching and being aware of your thoughts. And when you feel the things that make you feel bad, the worry, the fear, just stop for a minute and see how you want to feel. And just take a breath in and go to the next step. This is something you can't often go from fear to joy, but what you can do is take little steps, like just be walk. <clears throat> You know, I'm sitting here and I'm okay. Like physically, I'm all right this, at this very moment. Most things in my body are functioning really well. So you start that way and just start building it. And what I can tell you is it starts changing the energy all around you and in you. It increases your health. It also, it brings those vibrations to you. Because what we feel, if we're feeling stressed and scared, and worry their vibrations and of a lower frequency and they we attract the same thing so whatever we're putting out is what we attract so if you can just try to start being in the moment one you can just touch your hand and say right this second i'm okay and then we can keep doing that and what happens is we preserve our health because we don't know what's going to happen with all of this but what i can say it may be a time, it may be a gift in some way, and different for all of us, a little different, but it may be a time that we can actually spend on taking care of ourselves, doing things that we never had a chance to do because we run so much in it. So I just want to put that out as an invitation, you know, to try it. And you never have to listen to what I say. Try it for yourself and see what works for you. So Elaine had mentioned, you know, thinking about parking spots and then you just get it. That's pretty much how life works. So what we are thinking about and what we're feeling, we actually bring into our life. So I hope that helps. Um, two more things though, in case worry does come in, I have something that you can at least try that helps you get out of the moment. You may uh, use your thoughts and it may work fine for you, but sometimes we have these ruminating Thoughts that keep going over or we're angry at somebody and it keeps playing over whatever they did to us. So I'm going to show you a technique and it's called Maynor vascular hold. You don't need to know that, but I just want to put that up <laughs> in subconscious mind. But here's what it's so simple. All you do is you take your fingertips and you're putting them on your forehead and just about the arch of your eyebrow. And then you just push your fingertips in a little bit and then you just pull out a little bit. And you hold that, close your eyes, and you can think about whatever it was, whether, you know, somebody said something to you that hurt your feelings or just the fear. You can just hold this. You keep doing that now, and I'll just explain to you what's happening with this. When we get scared, the energy leaves the front of our brain, and it goes back to the back of the brain, which is called the reptilian brain, where, you know, that's the fear. So our body can really engage in doing something like running or fighting. It's how mothers lift up a car when a baby's under it. We just get the strength because all of our um, thoughts go back you know, to the reptilian brain for safety and all our energies give us extra strength. So that's good when we need it like that. But mostly we're under chronic stress. And when we keep being upset and worried, it actually works against our immune system and it wears us down. So this worry, you, all you need to do is put your fingertips on the forehead and then tug a little bit to the sides, it's very light, and then just close your eyes and allow this to start working. The fingertips are drawing the blood back from the back of the brain to the front of the brain where we do all of our rational thinking. So this is even good if you've had a fight with husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, you can put your fingertips on there when you're away from them. It helps you, helps you think more rationally about the situation. So that one's, it's gold. It's so easy to do and it really helps you in a moment. <clears throat> the next one, if you really feel like you're in a panic and you're overwhelmed, this is called the panic hold. And all you do is you put one hand on your forehead 
and one hand on the back of your head at the opposite. And then just close your eyes and just hold that until you can feel yourself settling down. If you're really anxious and really feel overwhelmed and panicky, you can, if there's someone nearby, you can ask them to hold that for you. And it really works so well. I use that in the hospital so many times when people were getting ready for surgery and just freaking out. And it just calms them down. So I hope you um, find that these are helpful for you. I know it was a lot of information, but you have the recording to refer to. And what I just want to um, invite you to do is just be in the present moment and enjoy who you are. And thank you. Elaine will take any questions that you have, and, and then I'll answer whatever I can. I have one. I have one more request. You need to share the um, the one that saves me in the middle of the night, almost every single night in perimenopause. The the move to to cool you down. It works so well. I, I'm like a crazy person at parties. I'm always trying to show women over fifty how to do this, and they look at me like I've had too much to drink. But it literally will take my temperature right down when I'm having a hot flash. So share that one for any of the ladies that are that are suffering with me. <laughs> yeah. So that one called Mela Mudra. And again, you don't need to know the name. But what it's designed for, when I was talking to you about oh, when we're scared or worried or, you know, when the woman picks up the car and strain, what's happening in the body is that when that blood goes to the back of the brain, your energy, the meridians, you don't have to know what they are. But that's how energy flows in your body. And when you get really scared or um, what happens in, in the nighttime, there's a lot of things going on that will trigger your hormones to, to make you feel like you're in that frightened state. And so it's called triple warmer. It goes off because it tries to protect you. But again, in the middle of the night, you know that you're safe. It's just that it goes off. So anytime that you feel a little funny, you get those hot flashes or feel nervous and anxious, like something just comes over you and you don't even know what it's about, what you'll do is you'll take your fingers, um, place your thumb over top of the index finger now, like that, on both hands. And then you're gonna place your fingertips on your forehead and your thumb now on your temple. And you just sit there, or if you're lying in bed, you can do that. And what you do is you just stay there until you feel like your body's starting to cool down or calm down. And then you know, you know that it's, it's called um, triple warmer reactivity. So then you know that your body's more stable and it feels like it's um, getting safe. So I call it the peppermint I patty. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I could do my peppermint patty. I'm, I'm on fire right now. And it literally cools me right down. It's amazing. All right. I'm going to pop my, my face back on here. Let's do, there I am. I'm so relaxed. I'm, my hair is probably a mess. I'm doing all the moves while you're talking. Um, so I hope that all of you have tried a couple of these things. Um, some people may have had to jump off early and didn't get the full experience. So this will stay up on this page. You know, I never take the videos down. Um, I will also pull it over to my YouTube page so that I just want to share this with as many people right now as I possibly can because of what everyone is feeling, you know, right now at this time. Uh, Colleen was, like I said, she was. Um, part of our retreat in Clearwater in February of this year. And I loved having her and people received it so well that we've invited her back. So if this is something that you want to experience more of, Colleen will be, <clears throat> excuse me, at our retreat in this coming February. It's at the same location. The dates are February 21st and 22nd. Um, what Colleen does is, you know, a two hour piece of a two day weekend. So it's all about, you know, getting in touch with your inner being as well as your skills as a hairstylist. And, and, you know, some of the things that we just did with Colleen, you know, think about in the salon, that, that one where you, you know, do the down the part and pulling it out. Imagine how amazing that would feel on a guest who comes in and is really frazzled because she couldn't park or she was running late or in, in this case, her children are home from school and she was still trying to get her hair done. So 
um, definitely a lot of useful um, information. So I'm going to look and see if anybody has any questions. I, I hear some feedback now that I'm on here. So I don't want that to be annoying for people with the two of us being on here. Um, there was, oh, uh, Maria was saying when we first jumped on, so happy to see you again. Love you. She was at the retreat, Maria. So she was happy that you were here with us. And then Dana said the power of manifestation when you were talking about your thoughts and how powerful what we think is and how it affects our life and brings things into um, our energy field. Um, Tammy, when you were doing the exercises said it works. <laughs> So what's, what's amazing to me is how you can feel the energy and you're doing this on your computer. Like you were yawning when you felt that everybody was complete. For those of you that are wondering what is with the yawn, that's when Colleen can feel that all of our energy has shifted. It makes her yawn. So explain Colleen a little bit. I know I don't want to go too, too long, but you explained to me, you know, sometimes we get annoyed by a yawn and we think that we're just overtired, but explain what a yawn can also be with our energy. Yeah. So what happens, um, um, my body reads other people's energies. So it's, it's, I'm not taking it on. It just happens to read it when I'm in a situation of working with people. And so what I have found with myself and others is that when we start to do different techniques and the energy begins to move, that I'll yawn for them when we're doing a one-on-one -on -one session. And then that'll, um, then I know how things are moving for them. After they get engaged into that um, star one-on-one -on -one session for a while, then they'll start yawning on their own. Their eyes will start tearing. And what that means is that the body is moving these energies. Uh, that type of work is uh, the one-on-one -on -one is really working with beliefs that people have. And so when those beliefs change, they they show us through the yawn. That's how the energy is moving through. And when the eyes tear, it's how the the body is actually releasing uh, different energies that were stuck from our limbic system where all of our emotions hang out. So it's, um, for me, it's awesome because I can work with people over the phone. And I didn't realize that until I moved to Florida. So it, it's, it's really helpful with working with people around the country. Um, but yeah, the yawn, that's what the yawns are, just energy moving. So when you have, um, you think you're tired, it's not really just that. It's that your energy is sort of stuck and they're starting to move. So encourage that. It's, it's a compliment to a holistic nurse when you yawn. <laughs> so I know people are going to be excited to tell their friends about all of this and show them this video. But if someone wants to do more a deeper practice with you and experience what I have experienced and continue to experience with you. Um, how can they get in touch with you if they want to do some one-on-one -on -one work? Well, they can go on my website, which is. I'm going to type it in. Hang on. Let me get my keyboard. Okay. okay what is it? Energy healing. Clear water. All one. Dot com. Dot, dot com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or and I can always call. So we have a quick question and then we're going to wrap it up because I know people have lots to do and I like people to stay, stay here and stay engaged. She says not to be negative. What do you suggest for ourselves to do if someone else has negative energy? A quick reboot for ourselves. I'm going to answer. I think that Rose thing is important. To like before you go into the space, do that rose exercise to shield. It's like a shield where it's it's like Wonder Woman. You can't, it won't get in. But I'm gonna have you answer. <laughs> no, that you know what? That's actually perfect. But the um, the second part of that is is when there is something going on and somebody says something and it really creates a reaction in you. You get upset or angry. That's um, a little deeper than this what we're doing today but just to let you know it's actually a little it's a part of ourselves that wants to be seen so other people yes. are a reflection of us so just know during this time there's so much going on and since we're closer quotes with our family uh sometimes more things come up and especially with this time stretching stressing people uh not everyone not everyone knows how to look on the positive side i'll say that 
So what you can do, definitely do the energy to protect yourself. But also if you start to see that there is a, a reaction in you, then um, just know, just maybe start journaling and see what that reaction was. Because it usually is a part of us that very down deep. Um, maybe we'll do another one and I'll talk more about this. You know, I, I, you just took the words out of my mouth. There's so much to that and, and it's so important. And that has helped me so much in understanding that it's not about them and their negativity. It's why is it triggering us? What did it, what is it bringing to us when it really has nothing to do with us? And it is such a mirror and journaling has been huge. My husband laughs because we moved and we tried to take as little with us as we possibly could to not have clutter, but I have drawers full of journals and they're my lifeline. You know, it's, it's to get it out and off your chest and out of your head, you know, to your point about the rumination circle, um, just getting it onto paper, even if no one else ever reads it, it's just when I go back and read it and I see the pattern, the repetitive pattern of talking about the same thing over and over and over and what good does it do? You know, you need to make a change. So like, that's, that's a great answer. You know, look at Ashley, why is this person triggering you? And is there anything about yourself that you don't like that that person is showing you? And that you don't realize that it's something that, you know, is bothering you for that reason. I'll give you a very quick example. Yesterday, a client I was working with was um, really upset about her daughter. You know, she she had some relationship problems and she was really getting upset and just started, you know, to get scared for her, for her daughter and stuff. And then, and then all the fear of what's going on in the world. So as we worked together, what came up, and it wasn't anything to do with her daughter, the story that came up is when she was 12 years old, there was a uh, incident in New York where a woman was mugged out in the street and people were around and they walked totally away from her and they didn't help her. And here she was 12 and she was thinking, oh my God, this is, she's like, before that I thought the world was safe. Mm -hmm. That was one of the beliefs that her body held, that the world was not a safe place. And what has happened as a repeat pattern for her the world was showing her that it wasn't safe. So as we balanced that and, and changed her belief that the world is a safe place and she's safe in it, she started to feel so different. At, and then I would take them back to the story and she could see the story and she was able to see it differently without all of the charge in it. So that's what's happening right now. We're gonna probably get a lot of reflections from people because it's a time of growth for us. So I hope that helped. Not sure. Yeah, no, I think it did. Um, one more thing popped up from Lizzie. She says, I was told rinsing your hands on cool water helps clear others' energy to break the bond between them and you. That's a new one for me. Have you heard of that? Well, when I first started with energy practice, everybody would be like, oh, that energy sticking to you. And oh my God. Okay. I in the hospital, so they're like, yeah, wash your hands with cold water. So you can do that. It's absolutely fine. But a lot of it is a mindset. It's what mm -hmm. we say. I don't allow any energy to stick to me. It's just like theirs is theirs, mine's mine. And when you have that rose, that's what. But if you feel good using um, cool water to, to rinse, that's that's really good. But a lot of the um, practitioners that have been doing this for a very long time um, use the intention that we're good. Stuff doesn't stick to us. But whatever works for you. So it's, it's interesting because it's kind of by doing that practice, by putting your hands under the water, you're thinking in your mind, this is getting rid of it. So it's actually the thought more than the physical movement of them rinsing their hands. Well, it could be both. Yeah. I, I said 28 years ago when I first started this, it was like, oh my gosh, put a grid around you, protect yourself and, you know, rinse, and, you know, in between. But what I found is um, I just had a strong belief in that my body knew how to allow other people to have their energy and mine. Plus the techniques that we did today, there are things that you can um, really use that the rose technique, but also um, creating whole brain, it helps your energies get stronger, your intention, all of that. Yeah. Hope that helps. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I loved this session. I love Colleen. She is always there for me when 
um, wigging out and and having you know lots of anxiety. Um, we did a session, a one on one in person before I went home for the holidays. We all have a lot of anxiety around the holidays. It's busy. I was traveling. I was going to be staying in a hotel for a straight week, and it was a lot. And I called her as soon as I got home, and I said, "Oh my gosh, what, whatever we did together, it really." shifted everything for me. So this is just a little taste of, you know, what it is that she does and how, you know, having, um, you know, your thoughts, I, I always say what we think is going to happen in the story in our head is oftentimes way worse than the reality ever could be. Um, so just changing your thoughts and shifting your energy and doing these little helpful exercises. Um, I put the website up again, it's energy healing clearwater.com. I hope you guys will reach out to Colleen. Again, this is going to stay up here. So feel free to tag a friend. And you know, this isn't just for hairdressers. This is for everyone right now that's going through um, this uncertain time of anxiety. So Colleen, thank you so much. This has been amazing. And I will see you all next week on the coffee chat. Bye. Thanks for having me.